Good evening and welcome. I am Amarachi Ubani. Tonight, residents of some communities in Adamawa State flee their homes over rumored plan by attacks. Plan of attacks by herdsmen. Inspector General of Police pledges adequate security as state government calls for calm. President Buhari applauds level of progress in the rehabilitation of three Chibok girls, reaffirms commitment towards rescuing the remaining girls in Boko Haram captivity. The Sultan of Sokoto raises alarm over rising drug use among youths, seeks urgent action to curb menace. And at least two people are killed as blast rocks Chinese city of Ningbo, south of Shanghai. tonight in the northeast where an uneasy calm now prevails in parts of Numan local government area of Adamawa state. Residents are fleeing their homes for fear of attacks by herdsmen following recent clashes between farmers and herdsmen in the area. Meanwhile, the government of Adamawa state is calling for peace in the area while the inspector general of police has promised that law and order will be maintained there. Violent attack has ravaged four villages in Newman local government area of Adamawa State, and the villagers are deserting their homes to find safe haven. Some of the fleeing villagers allege that some unknown men suspected to be Fulani militia are moving towards the area with weapons. One of the Fulani herdsmen seen in the area by channels television denies any plan to attack the villagers, but accuses the farming communities of killing their children and animals. <laughs> The matter. I'm seeing, I'm seeing that they are on the Muka A member of the fleeing community, in turn, says the herdsmen drew first blood by killing their kinsmen. You see, when he's on the farm, he come and just enter, put his cow, cows in the farm, so he won't talk. Say, why you enter my farm? So the flying come comes, arrest the guy, one killer. That is the problem. That is the main thing that leads the problem, cause this fight. When Channels Television visited one of the affected communities of Kikan, the village has been abandoned, with few people keeping watch alongside a platoon of soldiers drafted to the area to prevent an escalation of the crisis. The State Commissioner of Police on the entourage of the Deputy Governor during the visit to the hospital in Newman explains the genesis of the clash. Well, it was uh, a case where Edsmen and the farmers uh, had a misunderstanding of which uh, one, one uh, farmer was killed and uh, there was reviewed the prison, which led to what we are seeing now. A delegation from the Adamawa State Government, led by the Deputy Governor, visits the Newman General Hospital. These innocent children are victims of the attack. Thereafter, he proceeds to commiserate with the paramount ruler of Bachama Kingdom. A sad incident. The government is not pleased with what happened. But, uh, we are pleading with people to keep calm and maintain peace for now. The government will do something about it. That's the assurance. I'd always mention security, security, security. I'd always mention presence. Because by presence, it deter a lot of things. And uh, by the time I got the security people and the chairman of the local government to do what they needed to do, there was no response. That would have deterred whatever. Following these developments, the Inspector General of Police is visiting the palace of the Paramount ruler of Bachama Kingdom for an on-the-spot assessment. Uh, what, I, what I want to assure all peace-loving peace people of this state is that the General Police Force is going to delegate some of our professional investigators to assist the <coughs> command of the, 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 the state to investigate that incident Obviously, so that we can see an end to that kind of thing, we don't pray it to happen anywhere again. And we're also here, obviously, to also see the deployment of some of our informants we are trying to bring to the state to assist in trying to maintain law and order so that that kind of incident can never happen again. One expects that with the attention the area is receiving from security agencies now, the criminals will be hard-pressed to refrain from further violence. 
the people of Adamawa State expect that their safety is guaranteed by the security agencies. The Nigerian army says soldiers have repelled an attack by suspected Boko Haram terrorists in Magumeri in Borno State. According to a statement from the army authorities, the insurgents attempted to overrun the town by first storming the forward operational base. However, they met fierce resistance from troops of the 5 Brigade garrison and in the ensuing gunfight, three soldiers were killed and six others injured. The statement signed by the spokesperson of the 8th Task Force Division, Colonel Timothy Antia, says the bodies of the slain soldiers have been evacuated while the wounded are receiving treatment. Residents of Magomiri have been assured that security forces will spare no efforts to ensure their safety and they're encouraged to pursue their legitimate activities without fear. Meanwhile, the president remains hopeful that the Chippewa girls still in Boko Haram captivity will be brought back to join their families. President Mahmoud Buhari, special assistant on media and publicity, Garba Shehu, says the president has also applauded the progress in the rehabilitation and reintegration of the 106 rescued Chibok girls who are now back in school. In a statement, Mr. Shehu revealed that President Buhari has approved the payment of 164.7 million naira for the second semester fees of the girls at the American University of Nigeria in Yola. He adds, the absorption of the 106 girls into the school marked the beginning of their integration into the larger Nigerian society, thus fulfilling President Buhari's promise of providing the best education for them. So far, two batches of 21 and 82 of the girls who were abducted from their school dormitories in 2014 have been freed. Three additional girls were rescued by the military, bringing the total number of three Chibok girls so far to 106. The long wait for the reopening of the National Youth Service Corps Orientation Camp in Borno State may soon be over. That's because the Director General of the NYSC, Brigadier General Sule Kazaure, has given the assurance that the camp will begin operations shortly following the decimation of insurgents in the area. He said this during an inspection tour of the NYSC permanent camp in Katsina State. The call of the bugle. As the Director General of the National Youth Service Corps, Brigadier General Sule Kazauri, inspects the Quarter Guard Corps members. General it's a working visit of the NYSC Permanent Orientation Camp in Katsina State. The Corps members are drawn from the 36 states of the Federation. The Director General seizes the moment to encourage them to be diligent. There's no shortcut to success. Hard work is the only way. Gentlemen, wherever you find yourself, work diligently. He projects that the Boronu camp will soon reopen following the curbing of the violent activities of Boko Haram. It's no longer active like before. So they are now just looking for sub target to attack. So, based on that, we don't want our core members to be in the camp in Borno so that these people may not use them their own sub target so that was the reason why we are now using the orientation cup in casino but i'm surely very soon the atmosphere will be normal there will be a little peace in the i assure that them from then we'll start using our orientation cup a total of 2300 batch b stream one core members are undergoing a three-week orientation course in casino in a test of physical fitness, a tug of war is conducted between the male and female core members. For those that believe what a man can do, a woman can surely do better. These ladies prove it by defeating the men. One thousand five hundred core members deployed to Boronu State are at the Nigeria Civil Defense Corps College, Katsina, for the three-week orientation course. A step outside Nigeria now and to ensure that no one is left behind as the world marches towards achieving the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, policies aimed at empowering citizens must be given closer attention. That's according to the UN Deputy Secretary General in Nigeria. 
uh, that's Nigeria's uh, Amina Mohammed, beg your pardon, who was speaking at the 15th Nelson Mandela Lecture in South Africa. She noted that equality cannot be selectively applied as this will keep having wide-reaching negative impacts. Our Johannesburg Bureau Chief, Betty Debia, was there and now reports. Many intellectual reports say ours is still a world of inequality where the less equal and the often vulnerable to violent attacks and abuse is the feminine gender. The mayor of Cape Town, Patricia DeLille, had questions for everyone present. Are we protecting the most vulnerable in our society? Are we doing enough to put an end to the scourge of abuse of women and children? The keynote speaker and deputy secretary general of the United Nations, Ms. Amina Mohammed, called for a breakdown of institutional and attitudinal barriers to allow investment in the full contribution of women and girls in the society. She led the audience to stand in silence in honor of the abused dead, as well as the surviving victims. On gender inequality, she painted a broader picture of a solution that also included men and boys. We will only realize the potentials of the Sustainable Development Goals, as ambitious as they are, if we take seriously the values of inclusion, literally leaving no one behind. The sustainable change that we need to see will only be possible if we're including young people, girls and boys. It is true that women continue to be less equal than men globally, but gender is not equal to women. Gender inequality norms and stereotypes affect men, women, girls, and boys. The same educated girls were the same girls that were kidnapped by the uneducated Boko Haram terrorists. When we look back, I hope that we can say that a vulnerable, the vulnerable, especially girls and women, are a little closer to the center. In fact, I hope that we will be a society that is free of vulnerability itself. Thank the UN much. Deputy Secretary General left the gathering with a call to action. Well, you know, there are many different types of abuses at home in Nigeria, from where you can see it in the conflict areas in the northeast, but also amongst, you know, the general, generality of the population of young girls uh, and some boys. The Almajere system is abuse against boys as far as we're concerned. Um, so I think that, you know, it has different ramifications. And what we really need to be doing is to look at the policies around education, the policies around, you know, really how to empower better our, our communities. And it's a call to action to balance inequalities in order to secure peace, protect the environment and attain the rest of the Sustainable Development Goals. From Cape Town, South Africa, Betty Debia, Channel Television News. The Corruption Financial Crimes Cases Trials Monitoring Committee set up by the National Judicial Council is to actively engage prosecutorial bodies like the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission and the Independence Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Commission in furtherance of its mandate. A statement by the Director of Information of the NJC, Mr. Soji Uye, explains that the committee has so far received 2,306 alleged corruption cases, which are now receiving attention from its four subcommittees. Chief judges of state divisions who are yet to submit the list of alleged corruption cases in their jurisdiction to the committee have been asked to do so as the panel is set to sit in three zones across the country. The committee has also indicated that a new practice direction would be issued to judges handling the alleged corruption cases.